Hey, this is Jim. I'm here to show you how to diagnose your battery on your 2011 to 2015 Chevrolet Volt. Um, I use VX, VCX Nano. Um, I have the one that uh, does Wi-Fi and USB. I use the Wi-Fi one because it's easier. I can scan it inside the, um, inside the house or inside the office without being inside the car. So the first thing you want to do is you want to use this as top. <coughs> the car is on. So you find the diagnostic port under here and then you just put it on nice and straight and that's it. So it hooked up and we'll go back inside the office. Here. The windows are rolled up. It has plenty of Wi-Fi power to um, scan just fine. We want to go to settings and then network and internet. And it's not there's no Wi-Fi in this office, so you have to show available networks. And then the network is VCX Wi-Fi, and you want to connect. You just wait till that connects and you don't want to be connected to any other Wi-Fi network so if you are connected disconnect from that network and just connect to the VCX Wi-Fi network it takes a few it takes a few but yeah see now we're set up and we're we can communicate with the car so then we're gonna um, close this window and we're going to open the VMware player. So open. And this one is GM GDS2. I'm going to play virtual machine. Expand the window. And it's opening Windows XP in a virtual machine. And the program the, that we use to scan with is on this virtual machine. So we have to wait till this boots up before we can open. <clears throat> the GDS2 uh, program. So it just takes well, just a little bit. So as soon as the hourglass goes away, maybe rock and roll. So you can hover over this and you might see the network. Oh, it doesn't show. Anyway, we're ready to go and now we're going to um, right click GDS2. Doesn't really like that. Just double click GDS2. And then just wait. It takes a while to boot up. It's it's a really slow program. Okay, so we're in GDS2, and so we just go up here and click Diagnostics. So if all your communication is fine, it'll pull up your car and your VIN number, and then just give you the screen bar, press Enter to continue. So the VIN number is right here, 2011 Chevrolet Volt. So we're going to go into Module Diagnostics, and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the list, and that's Battery Energy Control Module. Click on that. And we're going to go to Data Display. I always like to check the temperature data on a car, if it's a new car, and just see if they're all pretty close. See if there's not an outlier, but they're all pretty close, so that's good. So I'm going to go back. And 
and then we're going to go to voltage data one. This is the first 32 battery groups. So you have battery group one through 32, and you just want to look and make sure at the top of charge. You want to you want to do this right when the car is finishing charging, so that you see what the voltages are right at the top of charge, and it should be around 4.07 volts. This car is not fully charged it's pretty close but you can see that they're all right right at four volts and i mean this battery is perfect it, it's all four volts but you you want to do this definitely when the car is just finishing charging that's the first step of this process is to ch is to check these voltages when it finishes charging and look for one that's higher than all the rest. They should be about 4.06, 4.07, but there be, you know, if you have a bad module or battery uh, cell group, it's gonna be significantly higher. Um, it, this has been my experience, it, it's significantly higher, like mine was 4.06, 4.06, and then one was 4.12. Um, and so I knew that there was something going on with that one. So once you've looked at the first 32 and they're all the same, you have to go back and then look at the second group. And so you can see they're all hovering right around four volts with no outliers. So then go back and look at voltage data three and see so you can see they're all four volts. So this battery is great. There's, it has about 130,000 miles on it. It's fantastic. So once you've done that, you go drive the car until it's flat empty, no battery left, zero battery, and then do the same thing again. So you can do this inside the car. You can leave this inside the car. It doesn't have to be hooked up to anything um, since you have the Wi-Fi um, connection between the dongle, which we plugged in to the uh, diagnostics port, um, you can just leave it in your car and don't look at it when you're driving because you might have a wreck, but just leave it lit until you finish the battery and then pull over and do the scans again and see if the battery voltages are all the same. They're, they're going to be quite different at the finish of charge. They're going to be in the range of 3.55 to 3.6 volts per, per battery group, but you're just looking for one that's significantly lower than the average. And if you find one that's lower, um, likely if it's really bad, it'll just keep on dropping as the, you know as you keep going, it'll it'll fall down even further, um, and that's how you can tell if you have a cell group that's going bad. So that's pretty much it. We can show the shutdown progress, you know, shutdown, or I can show you a scan also, um, like engine control module. You go in here, and the first selection will be check for DTC. So hit enter and then enter again. And there are no DTCs stored, so that's good. So you can go back. And back again. And back again. And then you can just go down the list and scan everyone. There are some of these that, that don't have DTCs. Um, they, they don't store diagnostic codes. So you just have to figure out what those are. Definitely hybrid powertrain control module and hybrid powertrain control module two, these are very important for the Volt. And you wanna just see if you have any, you know, you wanna see if you have any codes on those two modules. If you're in, in this thing, it's always a good idea to, to scan it just to see if you have anything going on. <clears throat> but there's not, there are no codes. So anyway, that, that's pretty much the lowdown of GDS2. And the only way to get out of this is you go, you go back to the main screen and then you can go home and to quit you just hit close application and it closes it out. And then, um, you know, you're in a Windows XP machine, so you can just go down to start and then turn off computer, just like back in the old days. 
and then once once the virtual machine closes down you're just in your regular Windows 10 or Windows 7 or whatever computer and um, just go unhook unhook the the dongle from the dash and you're done that's it